Hotel in the heart of St Kilda here in Melbourne. Grand final only a day and a half away from us. It is a packed house in here. Great to have you with us at home. These two are here. Sam Pang, Mick Malloy, everybody. Boys, it's a great, it's a huge week. It's Who's a massive on? Who's show. on we're tonight? The boss is here. Gillian McGoughan's going to be coming in. Hey, We've got Luke Beveridge to cast his eye over the two teams playing okay. the grand final. Uh, Mark Rusciuto's coming in. Matthew Oof. Richardson. We needed some Richmond royalty tonight. Yeah. He's going to be here. Titus O'Reilly, Ryan Fitzgerald. Wouldn't be a show without them. And, of course, the Golden Committee. We're going to be giving that away. Pick and Palace. Tonight. Oh, who could forget? Come Pick on, and Palace it down. Down in the basement bar, uh, rocking some tunes on the way through. And hey. now tonight, as asked for, with beer nuts, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, no. <laughs> you've, been, you've been asking for these for quite some time, and the management's finally uh, conceded to What's bring that? them on. Well, that is what you're playing for on Saturday afternoon, my friend. The can, we put, Cup. can we put some beer nuts in it? <laughs> oh, is that... No, because one of the play, there might be an anaphylactic don't... player there after the game. We don't want anyone having to <laughs> turn after the don't match, though. Nicky, don't eat them, mate. They're rabbit serene flavoured. <laughs> 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 hey, how good, how, before we get stuck into the show, how good is the Esplanade yeah, well Hotel? Done, the Esplanade this is absolutely yeah. magnificent. Have a look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Mickey, Mickey. Of course. Yeah. The, uh, the Esplanade Hotel uh, holds a, a place close in your heart. Well, believe it or not, many, many years ago in this very room, I did my very uh, ever first stand-up gig. Is that right? Uh, pretty much on this stage right here. First one ever. How long ago? How many years ago? Uh, I think it was 1892. Wow. <laughs> Can you remember your... Well, mid-90s or something like that. you remember your first joke? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> right, actually, I came on stage and I had a brick in each hand. Right. <laughs> and I said... <laughs> I'm not saying I'm nervous or anything, but I just found these in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's why that's that, why you're the king, eh? That's why you're the master. <laughs> you have to understand how desperate you are for jokes when you carry two friggin' bricks around <laughs> yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. Because you need the you could, have been, you could have been one of the great prop comics of this country. Who would have thought? But if, the, if, the, if these walls could talk, eh, Mickey, what would they say? Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, get off, fatso. Or, or something <laughs> of, of, uh, of similar real. Uh, anyway, it's great uh, to be back. Well, you've come, you've come a long way. You should be proud of yourself. Yes. Uh, hey, it's fantastic. We're here. It's a big show, of course. Great to see the network has thrown its support behind the show. Outside yeah. broadcasts yeah. Are, are always a big operation. You know? So we're out of the studio for the first time. And um, it's lucky for this show, Channel Seven have uh, thrown their full yeah, weight really behind it. Yeah, the equipment for a broadcast of this yeah. size, uh, it's top class, as you can <laughs> see here. Um, yeah. You can actually, you can actually only watch this show on TV if you have an analog television. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be up on blocks by the end of the show. I should point out. Watch and it. I tell you what, yeah. it's such a glitzy. Can I say use glitzy? It's glitzy and glamorous occasion. You say that. You just well, did. I've just yeah. said it. You did. You did. It's such a glitzy and glamorous occasion that uh, it just feels that uh, we need to have a red carpet special. And to cater that to all the rivals, the, it's, it's, it must be Bedlam down there in the front door. Let's cross down to Dip. Are you there, Dip? Ah, uh, thanks very much, Mick. Can't help believe it. It's Grand Final Week again. Red carpet, Grand Final Week, and the Dipper goes hand in hand. Thank you for allowing me to host this beautiful night, the red carpet here at the SB. Cannot wait to see who turns up. And how many people turn up? I'm just looking around. Taxis are pulling up. The tram's coming in with us. Here's our first one. Vinny Contagio, you must be wrapped being here for the, uh, for the front bar, mate. Pick a pump. Pick a pump. Pick a pump. Yeah. Well, don't worry about that, Vinny. We've got other people coming. <laughs> so worry. Uh, boys, um, uh, look, look, it's a bit slow at the moment. Why don't we just go back to the studio? Oh, oh no, dip. Dip. you've got to get on board with that. You're really putting up down there. There are a few in here. What are you, what are oh, well, you, are you getting well, a sense from We're worried about the crowd. So tonight yeah. I want you mm. to welcome for the first time ever on the front bar our behavioural awareness officer. And seriously, <laughs> if you were thinking of mucking up, I would think again. Because if I'm not mistaken, our behavioural awareness officer on this occasion could be the one, the only <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Mickey! <laughs> 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 Yeah, wouldn't want to get out of it's a, Murray, yeah. it's, a, I, it's a very, very good choice because when I think of tolerance, I think of Mick Martin. 
Hey, um, <laughs> he knows how to defuse the situation. Yeah, exactly. once, once we get to Saturday, well, look, it's already building. Obviously, the, the, the excitement's building towards Saturday afternoon. A few people feared that that might not be the case. It might have just lost a bit of an edge when Collingwood didn't live up to their end of the bargain last week, got knocked down in the preliminary final by the Giants, who thoroughly deserved to be there, by the way. But, I, I'm, know, happy said, to watch, said, I'm happy to watch the whole thing again if you want to. <laughs> Exactly. Hats off to those 22 GWS um, players, you know, to, to keep Collingwood out of a grand final. You're all heroes to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And, and then to, to see them come back from 40 points down and lose by four... <laughs> <laughs> Just big surprise oh. for me, by the big surprise for me, by the way, that was result it? because Eddie had a handshake agreement with GWS that Collingwood would. <laughs> 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 it's true. It's true. Yeah, but, a, lot uh, of, a lot of sad people around. Yeah, 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 well, a lot of sad people, and I think uh, Collingwood's plight and the collective mood of the Magpie Army can be summed up by this man. <laughs> <laughs> You see that there? Right there? Yeah. That's why I go to the footy. <laughs> <laughs> to, to see a Collingwood fan totally gutted. Yes, mate, that's right. Mate. You lost. <laughs> that's a board member too, by the way. That's amazing. Hey, there's two sides to every story, of course, and that's the look of despair on the face of Collingwood supporters. It was a very different mood in the GWS Giants coach's box. Eamon Buchanan, tell us what you reckon he was thinking as a siren man. Who do you know, back? Sam, you're... <laughs> Sam, you're the one who's good at... You're the one who's good at Nats here. <laughs> I don't think he's... I don't think he's, he's done... He's not done. He's done, not done. Right on. And got back. One. Yeah, right. You're the one good at maths. How many times did he do it? I think it was 11 or yeah, right. 12, that's, good. No. that's right. what you get when you go to a Swiss finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> No. He was up and about, wasn't Jeez, he? Big win. You know, pretty fine. I'll tell, I tell you who was who was even more excited. <laughs> uh, and, that, and these scenes are amazing. Have a look at Toby Green on the boundary line when the final uh, siren goes. Have a look at that huddle. Uh, three guys got raked in the eyes in that huddle. <laughs> <laughs> three, three guys. That's, that's his own teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Doink. Hey, there was a, a lot of there were a lot of talking points to be taken out of that game. Unfortunately for the AFL and the game, the arc didn't quite live up. It was released a couple of weeks ago to much fanfare, song and dance. This was going to solve all the scoring issues. Well, <laughs> in its first really big test in a big final, and unfortunately didn't uh, pick up that Lockie Kiefer touched that kick from Josh Thomas. A big fail, Murray, unfortunately for Murray, the Murray, I can't believe simply giving the old system a new name didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they tried to dress it up, let's be honest. They put a few shiny... They nearly broke his finger. He's going to cast. I'll be getting around like this. It was a shame, mate. They wanted it to work well. They put a a bit of energy into it and it didn't come up. I've been studying the arc. Have you? How, how, how How could you give that a goal? Seriously. No, you can't possibly give that a goal. No, I mean, that can't. finger has bent back to the point that it nearly In breaks off. In a preliminary off. final. Exactly, mate. It was I think I know decision. why, what? and I think I know how. What? I've been studying the arc. Let's go now to the footage inside the arc when that decision came down. Gee whiz. <laughs> We're back to 20 points. No review needed. It's a goal. Yeah! Yeah! Einstein, but it seems, doesn't seem fair. Is that an issue? Oh, I think it might be. We'll ask issue, Gil about that yeah, when well, he gets on. Oh, yeah, uh, but look, despite the fact that Cohen didn't make it, the excitement levels are peaking. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. Uh, and it started building. This is a Saturday morning. Traditionally. Is that yeah. Her Majesty's, the Richmond yeah, supporters line started the lining up Saturday morning. It's for the diehards, isn't it, Andy? That's fantastic. For those who really want it. Yeah, tickets, no, no, uh, tickets in grand final week going to the right people is always a, it's a big issue. Uh, oh, no question. Issue. Yeah, and that's why I was, I was thrilled to see um, I was thrilled to see why this this one-eyed, passionate fan, die-hard, die-hard fan, yep, yep. actually get what he was after. Why do you want to go to this grand final? Oh, I like going to the grand final. It's a good day. It's a good fun day. It's enjoyable. Who will you be going for on the day? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe Richmond. That's what you want. Oh, that's a. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's what you want. I think you'll be getting a premiership tattoo. That bloke, I don't think. <laughs> In one grab, mate, that, that just sums up the, the, the excitement amongst Richmond supporters. I tell, I tell you what, do not underestimate the other mob. Do not underestimate yeah, GWS, well. who, yeah, as man. we speak, the uh, road train is on its way. Yeah. Check out these scenes. Here it is, on its way from Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
That is They're coming, Mickey. They're coming. It's coming. Hey, the, there's nobody in the back seat, by the way. <laughs> it's not, yeah, that car's not full. Yeah, that it's car's not full. That. that is a dead set orange tsunami. All right, we're going to... We're going to massive... <laughs> We've got a massive show to get through. Uh, the, of course, it was the Brown Lowe. We're going to celebrate yes. that in a moment. The boys spent a very special night with Bruce McEvaney, his first Brown Coming up. He's been at the Brown, Brown Lowe diehard. Yeah, that's on the other side of the break. And Ryan Fitzgerald's going to join us. Come on! Well. See, thanks to the very fresh Charlton Brown. It's a lot of cobbles. It's not going to happen. A lot of what? Cobbles. <laughs> a lot of cobbles. Cobbles. A lot of cobbles. That's a dish served on MK. <laughs> You've heard cobbles before, haven't you? Did, does, it, does it sound like I've heard it before? No. <laughs> oh, 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 get out of it, you pink maggot! <laughs> Gary, I found a little something called uh, the AFL Squadron. Oh, yeah. I'm actually in a syndicate which race uh, six horses. Yeah. Probably the most successful is Supreme Gent. Well, there's a little tip for you boys over there. And I'm pretty sure, as you'll see, that Richo wanted to give him a thumbs up. He's got the ladies red carpet all covered. Can't wait for that one, Lingy. Plus, we're going to have a chat with Brownlow medal favourite, Tim Kelly. Did you find out what was wrong with Daniel Tarley? No, but yeah. I've, got, I've got twin boys and I think that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> nice moment there with Ben Brown on screen with his daughter running through. It looks like his daughter. Apologies if it's not. <laughs> Grab a terrain in. Oh. Oh. We rehearsed this. <laughs> After that, am, am I under the... <laughs> They tried a few things, eh, Felix? You've got to give them credit for that. Like when the players arrive to play. It's okay. No, it? it's, it's a bit of no, mate. It's, too... it's a bit of showbiz. It's just stolen from us Speak because up. we have been doing that. <laughs> this was bad. <laughs> the big issue uh, that was the talk of the football world this week. Have you ever had? A ruptured testicle. No. <laughs> we don't have a medical background, so I'll try and describe to you the best I can. A ruptured testicle. A, a ruptured what testicle. Works. Well, you see, here's the bladder. <laughs> oh, by the way, what did they do? Four million little concussion tests? <laughs> <laughs> He used to play for Paran. Long time ago. He's probably forgotten. Have a look at this footage. Here's Sam on the mark. What are these? What are these here? Hey, hey, come on! Come on! What's up with that? Yeah! Have a look at this. I bet you would have gone off if he was seven foot tall and from Texas. <laughs> What about when Eleni um, throws the bouquet in the air? Two of the girls are going to have to nominate who goes up. <laughs> if he's the boundary, I'll buy it. Do you reckon he'll come down the aisle backwards? <laughs> By the way, you and I, Andy, we were on the uh, well, Teague train what? early. <laughs> 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 Sorry you had to witness this. Uh, becomes the second player in a matter of weeks to rupture a testicle. He did it at... Tr Shut up, Siri. Uh, he, uh... How does that happen? I don't know, but she's piped up when you said testicles. So we just had someone walk out of our studio audience. First name just worked out, it's not a pub. I is that true or not? <laughs> I might ask it. Welcome back to the show. Uh, it's yeah. been a big year. It has been a it's big been year. a great year. Yeah, the yep. show's in progress. You yep. just saw those epic pictures uh, at the SP. Let's go out the front and Tipper, what's going on? Let's see if we engage the excitement. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously, there's still a lot of arrivals right. to come. There was a tram strike today traffic, in Melbourne. Traffic was, bad. traffic was bad around the place. Traffic's horrendous. Um, we'll cross down later. We, we love uh, you getting involved with the show uh, on our many and varied uh, social media platforms. We love it when you get involved. And there's a reason to stay involved after the footy season. We've got a couple of cricket shows coming up. We'll let yes. you know uh, about stand all by. of those. So stay involved, and uh, we'll tell you about that as they get closer. There's also a little rumour that's... First, uh, first I heard about those cricket shows. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you may be required. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it after the show. Yeah, okay. um, there is, I believe, a little birdie's telling me that thanks to Carlton Draft, there's a world first occurring on grand final days. Is not that your tweets, and I'm not talking about you. Oh, yes, this is your true. Your tweets are going to be appearing on the sign, the Carlton Draft signage around the MCG. On the signage in the middle of the ground as the game's in progress, yeah. uh, the, my tweets will be going up. I think there'll be about probably a dozen tweets, maybe a dick pic. I don't know. <laughs> How's well, it going to work? I'll see how I feel on the day. You're not, you're not, you're not overly prolific on Twitter. How's that actually going to work? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll probably just Google it in. <laughs> oh, no. See what? Yeah, well, and that is happening. That's a real thing. No, it's so they'll be going thing. up live. Keep, keep an eye on those tweets. It's three quarter time when the Tigers are six goals down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. will be they fun. might start off really positive, and then who knows how they end. We are a compendium of the week. We're looking forward to Saturday afternoon, of course. Monday yeah. night, Nathan Fife became the 15th multiple winner of the Brownlow Medal. I mean, 17. Yeah, put your hands together. He's what a phenomenal player. This what a player. Time. 17, like he got 17 votes in games they won and 16 votes in games they lost. So it does. Tipping a four-way tie, but it was it was quite a bit in the end. There he is, famously after 2015 Brownlow when he tweeted that famous photo. Yeah, look at that. And he reprised it last night uh, on, on, on Monday night uh, with with that look, which I personally. Uh, I think it's a bit much. It's what? a bit self-aggrandising. I'm not sure that's oh, what? the Gee. right thing to be. That's in it's interesting you say that, because last week on the show, yeah, um, we exactly. celebrated your under-15s best and fairest. Metalizer. Last week on the show, for yeah. about, about five minutes longer than we needed to. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then yeah. because we've got, a, we've got a photo of you after the oh, show last week. Oh, it's oh, very, oh. very similar. <laughs> that wasn't the point. That, well, that doesn't feel gratuitous to me, you know? Oh, it feels like it's... Sorry to all the kids at home <laughs> watching the show. Hey, uh, of course, Hamish McLaughlin hosted the Brownlow for the first time and did an absolutely did 10 out job. of 10 job. He was fantastic. Replacing, of course, Bruce McAvaney, who'd done 21 years of host of the Brownlow and done a super An institution, job, big, yep. big yep. shoes to fill. Yep. Well done, Hamish. You know what I felt who I was happy for? Who? That was Bruce. Yeah, go on. And we were honoured with the fact that he chose to spend it with us, his first one as a civilian, watching the Brownlow. <laughs> Uh, with, with us. It was, it was a great night. Come on, Bruce, you're missing the brown line. Boys, what do you reckon, eh? Oh, mate, we've told you you're not hosting. You need to calm the farm. Let it go, Bruce. We've left an outfit in the bedroom. <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Did you know that between 1924 and 1930, the umpires only gave one vote in the Brownlow medal? OK, Bruce, tonight is not about stats, yeah? Just relax, enjoy yourself, have a chip. Oh, oh salt and vinegar. Now, they didn't start, they didn't start flavouring chips until the 1950s. OK, Bruce, I've had it. That's enough. Richmond in Vlosten, three votes. It's going to be peckish, boys. Shall I order some pizza? Great idea. Some capuchosa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Capuchosa, the pizza, originated in Naples. It... Good Lord. Hey, Selwood, two votes. Ah, yes, pizzas are here. Bingo. Congratulations, well done. It's been the most magnificent year. You have done absolutely Bruce. superbly. Stop it. Please. A toast. Yeah. Oh, great night. Good brown light. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bruce, I haven't chipped in for the pizza. I've got that covered. <laughs> Any change, boys? Well played, Bruce. Very tight. No, we very tight, night. Bruce. The doyen. Like a hell of a night. What a man. Can you get my, can you have my phone number handy, or...? No, it's a bit like me with those cricket shows. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just sitting at home on my own, watching the Brownlow alone, I would have... Sorry, been mate. Nice it's hard to get him out, Bruce. Hey, um, it wouldn't be the front bar without him. Ryan Fitzgerald is part of the family. He is part of the... Uh, Front bar extended family. Yeah. We love the big fella, and he joins us tonight. Uh, I don't know where he is, but I'm told that he is uh, full of it. And Fitzy, they tell me that you are well and truly on the orange tsunami. <laughs> yeah. G'day, Andy. G'day, team. How you go? It's not. It's not funny. And when I told you that I was going to be on the GWS bandwagon, I didn't know that you dickheads were going to dress me as a giant twisty. <laughs> 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 Why is he a twisty? But I tell... <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, though. Who doesn't love twisties? Am I right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> 
guys, we are at the only pub in Melbourne, the Coopers Inn, where you can come and support GWS. And I tell you what, if you've come all the way over from Western Sydney, there's a couple of plush cars out the front that you can hot wire and drive back home on Sunday. So, guys, I want you to meet some of my friends tonight. <laughs> the man that came up with the GWS song, How Good Is It, from the Cat Empire, Harry Angus. Welcome to the yeah, show, Harry. Harry. Mate, mate, you're a prolific songwriter for Cat Empire, but what, feel, what was the feeling when you came up with a great song like that? Because I don't know if you know, but it was voted the second best song in the AFL a couple of weeks ago. I know, I heard. I'm very flattered. Um, firstly, I don't really feel like it's my song anymore. It's a team song. Um, but I still love hearing it, and I, and I hope I get to hear it, the whole stadium sing it. Yeah. Um, but it was pretty easy, actually. It was just a bit of fun, you it's know. Right. So, yeah. Do you actually barrack for GWS? Yeah, I do now. Yeah, yes. you do now. Well, uh, we're going to get the song right now and fire up the pub, but this is how professional Harry is. He says, I'm not going to do the song unless I get the double bass in here with me as well. So take it away, Harry. Let's do it. Come on, everyone. from 2012. Seb, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you. Now, Seb, you, how, many, how many GWS games have you been to in your time? All of them except one. Oh, you've only missed one game. Missed the one game. And you originally did the banners. <laughs> yeah. And I heard you got a little bit of help from someone when you did the banners. Yeah, we did. Toby Green. Toby Green helped you? Yes, and he used to do handstands. Oh, did he really? <laughs> was there a moment where you are a little bit late with the tape and you turn around and there was a couple of studs in your face? <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right, now... Uh, <laughs> one, one question, who's your favourite GWS player of all time? Devin Smith. Devin Smith! Well, have I got a surprise for you. Dylan Buckley from <laughs> GWS! <laughs> now, mate, how many games have you played for GWS? Mate, two of the best. Two of the best. <laughs> well, hey, welcome to the club, mate. If you, you play your cards right, you could be dressed as a giant twisty in a few um, Jill, you love this club so much. The boys love yes. you. What was it like watching them win the prelim and, and, and seeing them in the grand final this weekend? Mate, huge. Uh, yeah. Obviously, tough boys. Uh, so glad we won and can't wait to take it home. Yeah, and, mate, is there a chance... You're still on the list. Is there a chance you could be on the MCG on Saturday? Well, mate, it's funny you ask. Leon said, I want you out there. I said, let's do it. He said, grand final sprint. I said, OK. So you're doing the grand final sprint for GWS? I'm on tomorrow. Dylan so, yeah. Yeah. Actually, before we, I just might. Can I get a beer, please, and just put it on the put it on the tab, which is the AFL. They play for everything else that GWS does. Um, but can I also? I just <laughs> just want to, and I know you got Gil on afterwards. There's a there's a seedy bloke in the corner of the room over here, and I don't know who it is. I need to go and see what he's doing. Excuse me, sir. Are you a GWS fan? No, I'm not a, no, not at all. I'm a Tiger uh, spy. Actually. It's Tony Jewell, everyone. 1980 Richmond Premiership Cup. Are you spying tonight, are you, Tony? Absolutely. Now, yeah. if it was 30 years ago and you were telling your boys to run out there on Saturday, what are some of the things that you would tell them, Tony? Um, well, I know they've got some sore players. Yes. And uh, I'd certainly be targeting them. Yeah. In a, in a big way. But you'd get stuck into Lockie Whitfield, would Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Good well, on well, you, Tony. Well, yeah. Hey, Tony, I've only got one response to that, mate, and that is... <laughs> Giant twisty. He's orange. Oh, yeah. That's, don't let me join the dots. Why is he a giant twisty? Yeah. Why is Tony Jewell there? <laughs> hey, uh, it, again, it's become a bit of a tradition of the front bar grand final show. Uh, the man who puts together the iconic image of the winning team for the Herald Sun, and of course, all proceeds go to the Good Friday appeal. We'll, we'll have a look at the two big ones a bit later on. But he's been working on a few sketches for us. He joins us on our show every single year. He's from the Herald Sun. He's their lead cartoonist. Please make him welcome, Mr. Mark Knight, Hello, Mark. everybody. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, Mark. 
Obviously, you've, you've got the big ones that you'll unveil for us at the end of the show. I can't wait. But uh, when you get the, your first chance for potentially GWS, so it comes across your desk, it's the first chance you get to do the iconic cartoon. And yes. How does your mind work? Did you, did you have any preliminary sketches? Look, uh, I thought I'd share with you uh, an initial sketch I did because worst case scenario, Giants get up, we've yep. got to have a poster sure. ready. Yep. Uh, and I thought, you know, that poster should maybe feature their, their, their most famous player, which would be young Toby and um, doing what he does best. So I, I've come up with, with this one here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Wow. Yep. <laughs> so that's, that's a potential. Yeah. <laughs> what about, and I, I know you don't generally do this stuff, but it would yeah. make a lot of people happy if you could commemorate somehow Carlton losing Collingwood. in a preliminary fight. Collingwood. Yep. <laughs> uh, they're all the same to me. <laughs> Co Collingwood losing in a preliminary final. Is there anything? Yeah, look, I, 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 I did think about, actually, we, we did the... Uh, the, uh, the wooden spoon poster last year for Carlton, but... Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, sorry, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, Collingwood, incredible consistency, and I think that deserves a poster. And so uh, we've got the 2018-2019 side-by-side yeah. poster. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nice, mate, that is good. Oh, that's oh, nice one. Yes. Co copies of this will be on sale in the foyer. <laughs> the they will sell like hotcakes. <laughs> and finally... Um, this season will be remembered probably for the just insipid performance of the Melbourne <laughs> Football Club. Yeah, look. Do, do you have anything for the ages for the Melbourne Football Club that might I, help us remember the season I, that was? Yeah, look, this was this lot of pressure in this one because there's a lot of expectation with the sure. D's. And they were a team that promised a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah and delivered um, not too much, but uh, they're always on the cusp of greatness. So we've got the, not the Premiership poster, but the Premiership coming soon poster. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, That's how old Max Gordon will be. Love it. <laughs> so, there brilliant, it is. Word, brilliant word by you. We'll get you back a bit later with the two officials that might be coming up, either the Giants or the Can't wait. Good on you, Saturday Mark. afternoon. Thanks, Mark, Mark from here right. on Don't go anywhere. We're here for the Brewery Fresh Autograph. When we come back, the CEO of the AFL to join us here, Mr Gillen McLaughlin. <laughs> Esplanade Hotel down here in St Kilda. Thanks to the brewery, Fresh Carlton Draft. I don't know why he does it. He's a very busy man uh, all the time, but particularly this week, but he always makes some time to come and be part of this show, and we're very, very thankful for it. Please make him welcome the CEO of the AFL, Mr Gillan hey, McLaughlin. Good. Thanks for coming in, mate. Lovely to... Lovely to help you, have you here, help yourself to some beer nuts on the way through. It's a huge week. It's, a, it's a exciting. Why is Razor we... Ray umpiring oh. the grand final? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Why is Razor Ray umpiring the grand final? Well, if I hadn't been sitting so close to you last week, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> but I'd like to apologise for that, by the way. This, <laughs> this is true. We were watching the footy together, and at one, did, at one stage I did accuse you of being the worst CEO in the history of <laughs> the AFL. Can you take us through? There was a lot happened that night. <laughs> give us, can account? you give us your account of what happened, please? Well, the first thing I thought is there's nine, there's 100,000 seats here. Why is Mick Malloy sitting opposite <laughs> me across <laughs> the aisle? Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I thought, why is he sitting with his ten feral mates? <laughs> <laughs> and then it got worse when I saw how you behaved. And that that and was when you actually tried, actually tried to, to ring the number on the board that says report. I was like, where is that <laughs> name? <laughs> Behaviour. <laughs> where's, where's Mick Martin when you need him? Hey, Mick Martin, he'll be around. No, you're a good sport and we appreciate it. Well, have you talked about the incident? Uh, uh, well, you'll have to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm what did he do? I don't do that. That's do? embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Well, yeah. It, so it's tight, yeah. and I didn't realise quite how agitated Mick got during the game and how completely <laughs> he couldn't watch. And then you're a dickhead, and I'll, the whole thing. And then, <laughs> he was, yeah, that was what he was yelling across <laughs> at the aisle. Anyway, Jack Rewalt snaps the goal, and Mick thinks that so they've, I, they've iced it. The whole crowd. And then he's telling everyone he's moonwalking down the aisle, and <laughs> everyone to like. And of course, Telling everyone to keep uh, a lid on it. Yeah, and of course it was a point. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gil, look, on behalf of the show and everybody involved with the show, apologies. 
I, Sam, you would never, you would never behave like that at the footy, would you? At the yeah. footy with Gil? No chance. No, because I know that one call from Gil to Peter Dutton, and I'd be deported. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. Thanks for coming in. I have... Um... <laughs> All right, enough. Oh, dear. I have too much respect for you. You know why? Because I like the way... You run the AFL as it should be run, like a dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Hey, can, can I just say, by the way, congratulations oh. on another brown low that went off oh. perfectly. You must be, your brother did a great job. Yeah. You must be proud of that. It was shorter. Everyone, everyone thinks we did really well because it was shorter. You did. And we've got some great footage here of, of you at the start of the night. Here they are dropping off your pay packet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and oh, look at the fist bump. <laughs> Where, where's the fist bump? Where did you learn that? We learned the... that on the mean streets of Turak, did we? Janelle <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> was nervous. We're out the back. Yes. And, and I was like, how are we going? And that was Janelle. Janelle. And, I, and she said, I am terrified. And I said, have you got a speaking part, you know? Why are you so nervous? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know, and I don't think I'll get it. I said, well, just don't drop it, and we'll be fine. I'll and see you out of there, and then she was. Um, Fantastic. Um, no, the white, should... whitest fist bump I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we should, um, on behalf of him... <laughs> I actually agree with that. On behalf of him... <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> it did feel like that. On behalf of everybody at the show again, congratulations. You've got your team into the grand final. You must be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you found out, you, you found out that I'm a closeted rich man. No, no, no. no. Well, I'm a joke. Of course, you, you love all the clubs in the competition, but you know, but particularly the AFL Giants. AFL Giants. The AFL, AFL Giants. Giants. Yeah. Are good no. guys. I, I bring up this topic. Uh, Steve Canelio, you wanted him to stay, didn't you? You said that out loud. I like one club players. That's what I said. <laughs> um, I probably didn't articulate it quite as well as that, but. He was obviously happy to stay in the end. But then, and there were oh, a couple well, of uh, yeah. clubs that were, you know, Carlton and Hawthorne were, having, a uh, were yeah. having a go. But in the end, I think it was, uh, it was going to be an easy decision to stay, considering, Gil, the size of his deal. Yep. Stephen Cornelio, the star midfielder for them. Uh, the deal, though, has been signed with GWS, reportedly worth $7 billion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we have supplemented. I can't, <laughs> now, I can't believe that's got out. They're going to have salary cap issues, aren't they? Yeah, well, there's, seven... a, there's an arrangement. <laughs> cost, cost of living in Sydney is a lot higher than people think. That we're expecting, is we're expecting another huge crowd, Mickey. We oh, love we am. Yeah, can I just yeah, say... We're, we're, yeah. we're expecting about 7 billion people. <laughs> <laughs> can you, as CEO, can you, can you loosen up a bit? Can you... Do you mind? Because my... You want to look at a good CEO. Who was CEO in 1956? The Kenneth Luke, the great... He ran a loose ship. Yep, Can, yep. Now, this is what grand final day should be like. Have a look at this. There's 112,000 people there. There's people sitting in the actual crowd. There's, there's no room for the seagulls. There. Now, that's a load of fun, isn't it? Look at that. It, it, it's not what, a that one, what about that one, Mickey? Where, where are you sitting? On the wing? Yeah, whereabouts? No, no, on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> You know it's out of bounds on the floor when you get hit in the face with a footy. <laughs> we might be able to put you and your mates down on the side. <laughs> right. But Jenna, we'll just let 112,000 in. I'd love to do it. Um, it's a bit tighter these days, isn't it? What about the 70s? Even in the 70s, it was a kind of, you know, laissez-faire environment. Come on in, bring your own alcohol if you like. There's a... <laughs> there's a... That guy... I mean, it, was a, it was a simpler time. I, 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 I don't know. I saw... <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Come on, a two-bin limit, obviously, but I mean... <laughs> why don't you just loosen it up? Uh, I sort of don't know where this is going. I've got to... No, no, I'm what? just saying, as long as everyone's happy and no-one's getting hurt, that's okay <laughs> to be. How many games did you go to this year, Gil? How many games do you reckon you went to? A couple of weekends, probably. A couple of weekends? Mm. Because I've noticed, this, I've noticed something. When, when you like to sit with celebrities, is that oh, be yeah. fair to say? <laughs> no, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to ruin your fun. <laughs> 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 I, there was a game. There was a game where um, where Chris Hemsworth and Matt Damon were there, right? Don't I love this. You, Don't you, know, you weren't actually at this game. Uh, they were they were there in, in the box. Um, yeah, Hemsworth thing, and then of course it was, they were sh then quickly you were there. By the way, as soon as you found out that they were there, then you were in the box with them. <laughs> um, what was that like, mate? Well, there's a ter you talk about the white fist pump. There's a moment. I don't know if you're going to show it here, but they, they just won. They had all had a big bet on the Bulldogs, and Chris Hemsworth stands up, and I was like, I just knew what was going to happen, and I knew the camera was going. I was like, 
I'm going to have to high five him <laughs> and look like I'm right into which, you know, I was just doing my job. But you, felt, you felt all right, still the richest bloke in the box, so that's nice. <laughs> 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 the, um... <laughs> oh, I'd love to be in that box with you, mate. That'd be great. Uh, hey, we talked about the R. Uh, it, it wasn't. It didn't operate the way you, everybody in footy, particularly the administration, would have hoped it would have operated last night, last week. What, what are the yes, comments? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm quite. Hey, are, you, are, you, are you nervous about the idea that a grand final could come down to the arc? And by the way, what was what was wrong with the old system? I mean, it wasn't perfect, but have a look. It kind of it, it had its value. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? There were occasionally. <laughs> Mistakes, but nothing's perfect. Are you no. wor- Listen, so it, it has improved is, from there. I are, think. You wo- are you worried about the arc at all, considering what happened last week? <laughs> <laughs> this one, there's no right answer. No. Clearly, that was a problem. Um, hopefully, Saturday's better. Is that, is that giving you what you need uh, again? I stopped listening ages ago. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we do? You this tell me you're going to be nice about He is nice. This is me nice. <laughs> I, um, one of the favourite parts of the show, mm. we love diving back deep into the archives, and uh, we love it. It's called Fresh from the Archives. <laughs> it's where we take a misty eye and look at the past and reminisce about things that are no longer with us. Uh, <laughs> AFLX. Let's have a look. Um, I... <laughs> there it was. It was the light green, but an instant... And the Rampage, of course, will go out forever as the only winners of AFLX. Uh, we all remember where we were when this happened. Do we? Ah, oh, look, at the, the, you can tell, just the atmosphere is, is electric. Um, I, can't be- I can't believe playing uh, touch Aussie rules football on a soccer pitch didn't work. <laughs> it did work, so. oh, Are you happy for that to be AFLX to be your legacy? Or, or just... Or... <laughs> You're going to frame a narrative, can't you? No. No, no. Well, there's so many to choose from. The China game? (laughs) (laughs) What else? Thanks. All right, all right. Settle down here. <laughs> Righto. We're going to start where we end in the green room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, mate, you, you've been a good sport. And do, and do you remember AFLX fondly? Mark, you've done a poster uh, for, for, what, for Gill's office. Look, it, it, it's a great, it's a great honour to do the premiership poster, but an even bigger honour to, uh, <laughs> to pay tribute to AFLX with the official... Oh, the Rampage. 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 And that's for you. We'll get to you. Yeah. It will be. And, uh, it's, it's on sale in the toilet block across. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, mate, can we just say thank you for coming on? Mm, and we do, we do... <laughs> <laughs> we do Always sincerely. Sincere. You can tell you're pretty popular out there with the electorate and you, you've done a great job. Oh, yeah. People do. Oh, I love you. Respect the job you're doing. And you're a good sport. You're a good sport no, for coming on. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, Luke Can you give me tickets for the grand final? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a story about that. <laughs> no time. <laughs> so, no, no, right. Luke, no time. Luke, Luke Beveridge not too far away from joining us, but uh, you've often said... You know about Pang's avoiding is the story. This what, man, what's the story? This man you... kindly got me a uh, grand final. No, 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 no. Tell the full story. Uh, mate, I, I, I walk I, in the grand final lunch. I always try... Tomorrow. <laughs> I try and walk in with two tickets every year and someone... Because I actually had two available because... Mr. Stokes, proprietor of Seven, had rang me and said he didn't need them. So Sam runs across like a little gill, Mr. McLaughlin, Mr. McLaughlin, Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin. That's how I remember it. And he came up with some hard luck story about the, you know, that you know he, he hadn't got any tickets and he wanted to go. And I was like, OK, I'm going to go. They're actually Mr. Stokes, but I don't think he wants them. If you come over and tell us both a joke and make us laugh, you can have the tickets. And? So he goes, I can't do it. I don't work like that. I don't work. I just... <laughs> I, need, I just take the mickey out of people like you. <laughs> and I said, you've got to tell a joke. 15 minutes, we both laugh. Tickets are yours. 15 minutes, though. What do you think actually happened? Oh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't tell ah. a joke. I'll tell the truth. I didn't get tell a joke. No, you said, I can't you, do it. You, you, you gave me the tickets. Yeah. And I scalped those tickets for five grand. <laughs> 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 no, I, did. I did not. Yes. Thank you for coming on. Who wins? Who wins? Uh, and and this will be a great. Football's already won, Mick. 
I, it's, that's always the best. That's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a grand final show uh, right. without a bit of live music, and it's a joy uh, to say that we've got the Picket Palace uh, to join us tonight. They've got their new album being released very, very soon, the footy record. Uh, I know you love a bit of live music. They're down in the basement bar, and they're going to be playing for us tonight. They're standing by, ready to go. And Seamus joins us. Seamus, welcome to the show, mate. Yeah, hey guys. How are you? It's going very well. How good is this? In the basement... Here at on? the Esplanade Hotel. And, mate, I just got to say, you must be pumped about playing live on Saturday in front of 100,000 people. The opportunity's going to be awesome, yeah? Oh, we've been waiting by the phone. We haven't actually heard anything yet. Oh. oh. No, we're only going Australian Act. Next year, Gil. Uh, <laughs> next year. Seamus, we'll get you in next year. Oh, we love the album. We're going to uh, tell where the launch is taking place uh, a little bit later on the show. But I know that you've got a song off the album for us. Uh, it's track uh, number two. Take it away, mate. <laughs> 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 Songs about Matthew Richardson, the best footballer of all time. Show when he, no. He no, no, <laughs> you couldn't put in a good word for us, could you? Oh, I could, but <laughs> <laughs> and Braybrook, I love Braybrook. Yeah. You know, what you see is what you get. Yeah. What's not yours can become yours pretty quick. <laughs> How old are you there, Michael? Twelve. <laughs> I used, to, I used to like to do a lot of dancing back in the old days. Good so. dancer. My second name's Elvis, so might as well do something. <laughs> right. In fact, where does Nicky come? Where did Nicky come? Oh, from? I don't know. No. <laughs> TV then was uh, a bit different. We were sort of feeling our way. We made it up as we went along. A bit like on this show now. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Mount, congratulations, number one. <laughs> Yeah, bit his finger. Three weeks he got back in 91 for this one. Did you get off that plane like Hannibal Lecter? Well... <laughs> How long did you think about these things for? Um, I started at about round four or five. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got on top of Ben in the end. Uh, <laughs> so I felt so bad for him, I actually paid his fine, so... Uh, <laughs> the tax deduction, too. <laughs> Could you believe yeah. you're in a Western Bulldog jumper? You're a premiership player for Collingwood. Can you believe you didn't finish your career there? Uh, stranger things have happened, but I look good in blue, don't I? Yeah. Uh, no. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pretty fond of your animals, because you did have a pet snake there for a while, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Rhonda. Yeah, I Rhonda, love, Rhonda. Yeah, I love Rhonda. I actually yeah. brought Rhonda in, I'll show you, so... Oh, there's the belt. Oh, oh, there's oh, oh, there's, there's oh, Rhonda. Oh, I'm actually a farmer, so... Yeah. What type uh, of farmer? Macadamia. Where? So, uh, just outside of Byron. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Macadamia. <laughs> 
It's the first time, you know, I'm back at home. Because of the player that you were, you were treated at, you know, equally and, and, you know, you were the captain of the club. Uh, yes, so I was fortunate. Seven years I captained the club. Uh, what was your nickname, Les? Well, it was Chopsticks. <laughs> And Bucks, the personal number four. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was before anyone knew me, so that was... And that, I think I recognised the model of that car. Is, is that a, uh, the old Mazda shit heap? <laughs> <laughs> you pinched Dunstall. Now, who did you have the week after that? Who Tony was... Lockett. And did you pinch him? I didn't get anywhere near him. <laughs> I don't usually say this, but if... If everything goes all right in the draft, we're going to take your pick 41. And I was just doing cartwheels. Yeah. Yeah, couldn't believe it. I was going to go, you know, get drafted by Carlton. Sticks didn't know it. I was going to go live with him yeah. as a 7 year old <laughs> Pick 40, Sydney Swans select Michael Lachlan. Oh. And I went, shit. <laughs> and it'd be a big call by the Carlton board. Yep. And, and the Carlton board have made some uh, oh, yeah. real doozies. <laughs> I always hear about how great you were, the greatest place ever. Mate, fair effort from Hawthorne that day, considering they played one short that day, Lee. How are you doing here? I've got two questions. How I'm you amazed that you found some vision where I didn't play well. I'm just... <laughs>
Bevo, that you, that you got to do in 2016? Because there's always almost a mythology about this sacred time before a game where it's just you and the players and you get to and give this, you know, a pre-match address. Um, because of Adrian Brown's documentary, The Outsiders, uh, which I recommend you see, we, we've actually got access to your pre-match address um, to your players before the 2016 grand final. Have a listen, we'll get your thoughts. Whether it's Kings or not, whether it's the Beatles, whatever your favourite band is, you need to play your guitar today, mate. You need to play your trumpet. You need to bang your drums, squeaky. Whatever your strengths and gifts are, you've faced the adversarial crowds, you've faced the external noise, everyone out there is for you today. You are the rock stars on the stage. So bring your gifts, bring your instruments, bring your voice, your song, your noise. Let's take our fury in an even 22 to the Sydney Swans, and we complete our year, boys. Peace out. Oh, that's unbelievable. That's really great. <laughs> how much, how long did you think about what you were going to say and, and um, when did you decide on, on that theme for your pre-match speech? Oh, I think we'd, we'd probably yet done and outused most of our themes, I and mean, we became our own inspiration. I think it was um, it was probably a myth um, that we'd get to where we got to at the at different stages, and um, and a lot of my work's just filtered into you know 12 minutes. Some of it's tactical, some reminders. In the end, there's uh, hopefully a motivational or an inspirational hook. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, I, it's filtered into um, something that you hope the players can grab hold of. At the end of the day, um, with 100,000 people, or 19 short on the day, I don't know how they didn't let another 19 oh, no, people in there. <laughs> Get a couple uh, of Mickeys. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, it, it, ultimately, they had to feel empowered. They had to feel like they were, and especially with what Meatloaf had done a couple of years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they, they, had, they had to feel like you know they had to, they could outperform that they um, that they were good enough and thankfully for for everyone it's in particular. Comes your favourite band to bring your instrument. I can't stop thinking about that. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. No, I'll they, probably come as Wingo Boingo. <laughs> well, I think it, spend it, our ballet men with that hats. I mean, <laughs> did you see the Warriors? You remember the well, oh, yeah. movie The Warriors? Uh, Come yeah. out to play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember yeah. Cyrus stood up at oh, the start? Yeah, and yeah. They, they I think we're about to get another inspirational <laughs> speech. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I, looking back, because I, I haven't seen much of that, I, I think I was channeling Cyrus from The Cyrus, Warriors. No, you know, great. Can you dig it? But I don't, I, ultimately, I, you know, it's... It's, it's great. It brings back great memories. I, I feel like I feel, I feel you that every time because I feel like sometimes on this show I'm out here on the electric guitar, <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by recorder and trying. <laughs> and, and I, I'm out here. I'm giving it. The, <sighs> Hey, hey, we want actually, you. We want you. To, we want you to. We want you to, really? cast, we want you to yeah. cast your eye over the two on. teams going around. You know what it takes to play against. You know what it takes to. Uh, you help us out with that. You know what it feels like to yeah. be beaten by them. But we're going to get you to look at Richmond first. We don't want you to do it on your own. We feel like we need a bit of Richmond. We've got a Richmond to legend, yeah, royalty yeah, in the yeah, house. Yeah. You saw him at the tail end of the last play. Right of the stage, Richo. Come on. There he is, big fella. Hey, How are you, mate? Come here. Come here. Good job. Come on. Hello, Hello mate. Hello, Hello Richo. Hey, Sammy. How are you? Hello. Hey, look. Hello. Hey, Richo. Hey, Murray. How you going, mate? It's good to see Mick become a little fanboy all over again, isn't it? Unbelievable. <laughs> Got the Picket Palace tea on. There you are, good, mate. mate. You're it's a great honour to have a song named named after you. You get yeah. on well with the boys. Yeah, they're good fellas. That was a career highlight for me this year. It so is yeah. a bit better than my footy career. <laughs> <highlight, laughs> <so. laughs> we might. We got. There's a, obviously a couple of things we want to ask you about the team. It's uh, the bombshell selection of the 2019 Grand Final down there on the interchange. Marley and Pickett comes into the side to play wow. his first game of AFL footy at the age of 27. It's a Remarkable story picked up in the mid-season draft. We'll get you in a second, Luke, but can I just ask, did you find out with the rest of us or did you have an inside running on that? Oh, no, you, you talked to people around the club and it was a genuine chance over the last few weeks, but I guess his performance in the VFL Grand Final on Sunday where he won the Norm Goss medal for best on ground, I think that maybe convinced uh, Dimmer and the rest of the match committee, but 
If you have a look at it, I guess, uh, he was drafted mid-year and he, the mid-year draft was there to come in so you could play straight away. If he didn't yeah. have that finger injury, he would have played earlier, I think. And he's an experienced player. He's played a lot of footy in the waffle. He's put good form together in the VFL. So I guess it was him or young Jack Ross, Jack who's Ross. basically just come out of the under-18s last year. So it's a brave decision, but when you look at it realistically, it, it makes sense. Has anyone, has anyone ever won the Norm Goss and the Norm Smith no. in the same... <laughs> no, I don't think they have. same we, year. Which yeah. makes a lot of sense. It all makes sense, but it is still a really gutsy call, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is, but I, I, the Tigers wouldn't think that it is uh, internally. I mean, they've been such a good side now for a significant period of time that... Um, his performances and the role he plays, and it'll probably be a little bit of a different role, you'd think, uh, in this 22 on grand final day. But um, all his attributes and what we saw last week in the, uh, in the VFL uh, flag winning team uh, lend themselves to being a very, very good uh, AFL yeah. player. And <laughs> the time is nigh. What, a, what an amazing, amazing debut it's going to be. You, uh, to, how are you going to go during the granny? Because I remember doing 2017. <laughs> you didn't seem to be handling it that well at the time. <laughs> Have a look at you on the boundary line here. And, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Richo, at, at one stage I was convinced you'd had a dodgy rabbit terrine. <laughs> 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 you know what I need, I reckon? I need... Um, you saw Matty Scarlett going into Wacky Wednesday. I need Hannibal Lecter straight <laughs> jacket on. <laughs> well, but even look at Watto. Watto's not doing much better. No, he's, uh, having, I, he... he's having a conniption, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, be all right to, you'll be all right on Saturday, won't you? Well, probably not, no. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, does this, this side, obviously, do you, do you put them as favourites on, on this occasion? Uh, well, you'd, you'd think so. I mean, it's... Um, I mean, GWS... <laughs> put together this, um, this form line of good footy but some great strong arm tactics off the ball. So that's going to be fascinating. I don't yep. think Richmond have faced the magnitude of that yet. So if they can sustain that, uh, it'll give them a chance. But uh, they bat deep, the Tigers, and, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'll have to be impartial and sit on the fence, other than Petricelli winning the 100-metre um, <laughs> half-time sprint. <laughs> there you go. All right. yeah, can that's can right. I, if he's running. He goes pretty quick. Can yeah. I just ask, while Richo's here, you know, you're one of my favourites, mate. You had a smooth <laughs> transition into the, into the media post-career. I've got to ask, you know, we saw it in one of the packages, I think, earlier. You know, that... that <laughs> wanting to give a thumbs up to Tim Kelly, right? <laughs> it's fair to say, let's look at the whole thing, though, because it's a, it's a, it's a very big run-up. He'd obviously committed to giving the thumbs up, Richo, and you were going to get there no matter what. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the kick. We are live from Marvel Stadium. Brownie ditched us for Vegas, so we've got Lingy in. Welcome. It's good to be here, Nat. Don't mind the sound of Vegas, though, but don't worry, you're still going to see Brownie. He's got the Logies red carpet all covered. Yeah, can't wait for that one, Lingy. Plus, we're going to have a chat to Brownlow medal favourite, Tim Kelly. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by, mate. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> hey, neither do we. Uh, enjoy Saturday afternoon. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming Murray. on. Matthew Richardson. Thanks, Thanks for coming by, mate. Thanks, mate. Hey, Luke, Hang around. He's going to stick around. around. Luke Everidge is going to put an eye over the GWS team when we come back. And on the other side of the break, joining us as well, Brian Sirikovsky and Jared Raphael as well. We'll have a beer after us, mate. Absolutely, Coco Bananas down there. They're going off tap. Uh, they're having a great time. Top shelf. <laughs> the, cra the, the crowd's not getting a bit unruly, is it? We haven't... Where's our behaviour? Yeah, where's our... Well, I, have a I think he may have been down there with the Picket Palace. Can what we just have a replay? Oh, 
Now, that's not <laughs> great from the behaviour of the wheel. No, we need him back here. We need him be better than that. He's got to be better than that. A bit of discipline. <laughs> uh, Luke Beveridge about to look at the GWS team for the grand final. Uh, there's been some big news today for your club, the Western Bullocks. Two pretty important players, two young key position and a veteran key position player have decided that your club's the one they want to go and play their footy at. Yeah, it's good for us. Um, Alex Keith from the Adelaide Crows and, and, Bruce, and Josh Bruce from the Saints. So we're still going to get the trade done, but um, obviously we've courted the, the lads um, in recent times and, and there's some gaps on our list. You know, we, we need some key position players and, and they're very, very good. Well, they're, they're actually 27, uh, 28-year-olds, those two, and we're, we're very young, so yeah. we... Oh, you're topping up. You're going to have a tilt <laughs> next year. <laughs> going to have a tilt. Well, you'd be Category C rookie, I reckon, Mick. Oh, um, well... We, we can get you in. Yeah, we can get you in under the... Uh, no, they can do laps around me at training. <laughs> Mate, yeah, if, uh, it's great that players want to come to your footy club, and you've been part of making that uh, a reality. Let's so, do GWS, well, mate. Let's, let's have a look at the team. Teams. They get in. They, they were formed in 2011, and here they are. They've been to a couple of prelims. Limbs. They won a final every year the last four years. They are stacked with talent. Whitfield and Green come in. Um, they Can they you, do it? They knocked you out. Have they played their final? Are they, they've had a tough run. They've got one more to go. They're in uncharted territory. Can they do it? Well, I'd, I'd hate to say um, for the Richmond uh, fans in here, they, they can. Um, and I, I'd hate to say it because they, they sort of, in the end, they, they but we, we've actually contracted... Um, George St. Pierre to take us for some real pre-season training because there's a bit of MMA and a bit of footy going on in our game and right. we just didn't win the MMA battle. <laughs> right. um, right. So we, 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 we've got to get better. So the Tigers need to be prepared for that. They've been um, prepared. So it's going to be a tough them. physical encounter. Credit to them. You know, the fourth week in a row, if they can get that done, they might just rattle the Tigers. But... Um, with Whitfield and uh, Green coming back in, there's a couple of good inclusions. Out of the 44 blokes that are running around, who's the toughest matchup on? Our, who is the one player that is the most difficult to match up on out of those? Well, I think the fascinating thing with both teams is Lambert and Whitfield play a similar type of role where they they both come up from the forward line and they're almost they're an extra midfielder. Lambert's more inside and out. Whitfield's more outside, and so what it does is it frees up half back lines from yeah. either side, and the coaches will have to keep an eye on who's more prolific. Um, with their runoff half back okay. and, and who's having the greater effect on the game out of Whitfield and Lambert. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be an interesting sort of by, by play in the game. It's interesting yep. you say that because, uh, Luke Beveridge, you know, I love you. But when it comes to strategy, when it comes to strategy, I usually ignore everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty rude. Well, I, I say this. I say this only because you... What about matchups? He's good at matchups. Exactly. If you think, Luke Beveridge, that Caleb Daniel is the right matchup for Jared Ruffhead... <laughs> <laughs> Jared Ruffhead looks like he's wearing a Caleb Daniel backpack now. <laughs> <laughs> what, happened? what happened there? Well, you, you, you're pretty... You choose your own. You don't you know, show him going back with the flight. He's got an enormous leap. Right, he, fi he finished in the ruck, Caleb yeah. Daniels. Oh, yeah. He really yeah. did. No. Hey, yeah, GWS could win their first... Uh, grand final. Yes. It's a possibility. No, yeah, and there's always something chance. exciting about Big someone chance. winning their first. Well, I remember St Kilda in 1966 had such a moment. And uh, if there was one moment that stands out from that game, it's probably this one here. Have a look at this. Now, uh, he's been seriously hurt, I believe. Can he get it out? He, I, I think he's been shot. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and everyone gathers round. Look at that. And can he get it out? Is it a goal? Who knows? Big moment, this. It's a massive moment in the game, and aye, oh, there it is. <laughs> High drama. Yeah. High drama. It's the moment everyone remembers, but no one remembers the bloke who hit him. Please <laughs> welcome to the stage, Brian Sirikowski. <laughs> right. Yeah, can I just say, <laughs> off the top, you're an animal. <laughs> What's yes. your memory of that particular incident? Because we're so well aware of the goal umpire and that footage has been seen a lot. But what's your memory of that occasion? Well, I have a very distinct memory of it because um, Stevens was a goal umpire, as you know, and uh, they were wearing a great coat in those days. Mm. Yes. And as I run back, I barely clipped his great coat. <laughs> yes. And this fellow saw a moment in time. <laughs> <laughs> 
100,000 people to make himself a grandstand finish. And by God, in fact, I've got to tell you, I reckon he was a soccer player. <laughs> he could have been a soccer player. That was in the... It's just stood the test of time. He, I he was a say. warrior. There's no question he was a warrior. But so were you blokes in uh, 1966. You brought, you brought the elusive first premiership to the St Kilda Footy Club. Uh, they were great scenes. This is the moment the siren sounded. What, what do you remember of the day, Brian? Well, uh, it was just a fantastic day. I mean, I was only 20 years of age and uh, uh, it was just one of those days where it all went well for us. I remember I played on there you uh, Ray Gabb. Yep. Oh, drinking grog again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dancing up a storm after the game. <laughs> is it true that in the post-game, uh, one of the rich benefactors of the footy club mistook you for another a teammate of yours? And It wasn't that particular game, but it happened. I think it was Essendon or Carlton. And the, the club rooms at Moorabbin had just opened and they were really fizz whizzes. St Kilda did in those days. Yep. And, uh, you know, we were a real party club. Yep. And I remember going up the <laughs> stairs to, uh, to the social function after, and this bloke leaned over the counter. We're very, excuse me, strong Jewish club. This fellow leaned over the counter and says, here's $200 for you, cowboy. <laughs> cowboy never saw that money. <laughs> 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 well, he, well, yeah, right. Well, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, worth a lot of money in those days. Yeah, yeah. Luke, I'm sure. Obviously, you you're in charge, of course, of, of you know players and a, and a week long uh, preparation of leading course. up to the the, uh, the biggest game of all in 2016. I was just wondering how you'd handle um, the preparation that Brian Sirikowski had for the 1966 uh, grand final. Let's have a look at Brian Sirikowski's preparation for the 66 the grand day final. The day, the day before. before. With Melbourne at fever pitch excitement, Brian Sierakovsky and his family take to their yacht to escape the tensions. It's impossible to avoid the contagion of excitement if you stay in the city, where no one talks about anything apart from the match tomorrow. What the hell? <laughs> We're only playing Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> What about that prep, Bevo? You like that prep? We're not, like sure, we're not sure where you were skiing. In those days, it could have been on the surface at Moorabbin. <laughs> <laughs> Would you allow that these days? Oh, surely, surely that was a week before, Brian, was it? No, it was a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look at the footage, he's nearly hit the pier <laughs> on the way past. Did you notice the can of beer in the hand? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> that was it. I, well done. Uh, thanks. Carlton it, draft. It was, a, it was a, a moment in time for the St Kilda Footy Club. You were key to it, and who knows, the Giants Would won. Would you like to see G GWS win one? Is that, that you, yeah, no, I'd like to see it. fantastic. Uh, well, well, get out. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Brian, thank you for your yeah, time. We for appreciate coming. you coming by. Before Please. we let you go, uh, uh, are you prepared to... I know you're, we're not you're asking who you're barracking for, but who do you, you know, as a methodical oh. thinker about the game, who do you think? I... No. No, you know... That's great. That's perfect. All right. No. Um, we're going to have to let you. We're going to have to. We're going to have to let you go. Hey, I've got a good idea, guys. Let's get Luke Beveridge in to do the teams and for special <laughs> comments. We do two segments. We ask for an opinion. Yeah. No. Yeah. I've, I've got this raw emotion where Leon and I need to get in a room and and do some MMA right. stuff after what happened, you know, in our game. Yeah. All and, right. and and so I can't go there, and and I. I I want, for your sake and Dimmer's sake, and there's a little bit of a fraternity there with the coaches, I've just got to be impartial. That's why I went the Petrocelli number. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> something like no, no. All right, mate. Out here. Thanks for coming on the Good show. Good on you, mate. Um, <laughs> Brian Sirikoski, our special guest. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of the break, the uh, Sam's Gun Award, the Golden Committee for 2019, a much-coveted award. But before we get to the break, a lot, so many great players retire year on year. We say goodbye to one of the most loved and most respected, Jared Ruffhead, this year. And as part of Airbnb's country pub project, six pubs are being revitalised around the country to encourage Aussies to visit regional pubs. Get out there, have a great time. Uh, we thought we'd, it was a good idea to send Mickey to Lee and Gaffer, the hometown of Jared Ruffhead, and I find out a little bit more about the project. Ruffy, 
thanks for having me. You're a good host. Here we are in the front bar of McCartan's Hotel in Leon Gatha. Why are we sitting here? We're sitting here, mate, because this is mine, and we're in my hometown, so we're happy you to have you here. Round. We're happy to have you here in Leon Gatha. Well, you say that now, but I'll, I'll yeah. ask you again in about five hours. Yeah, well, I'll get security to take you. Out, so. <laughs> it wouldn't be for the first time. <laughs> if you were to take me out for the day, yes. Where would you take me? Well, from here, mate, as the crow flies, you've got Rough Head Street, which is, has the football Hello. ground. Has the football ground. Is that like a, a court, prominent boulevard <laughs> named after a, a likely local? There may be a couple of street signs missing, but uh, <laughs> uh, the footy club is what drives the place, I guess. But uh, the Leongatha parrots. Oh, so, scary! The parrots. So now you're retired, Ruffy, do you think you'll be spending a bit more time in the front bar and uh, less, less time <laughs> on the training track? Is that Def it? Definitely less time on the training track. I think 15 years of running laps at Waverley is probably... How are you me. coping? No, I'm good so far. It's been uh, six or seven weeks and I've landed a job at St Kilda, so that'll be interesting uh, moving forward. But uh, country-wise, uh, potentially may have a couple of games back here next year. Whether it be, play for maybe, the maybe, maybe at Lean Gatha or... Captain Coach? Definitely not that. <laughs> What's the big change having to come out of the discipline and the rigour of being part of an AFL team? Yeah. What have you noticed as the, as the major change in your lifestyle? Uh, so, <laughs> the major change is the, uh, the training and, I suppose, discipline with dietary requirements because... Is it like being let out of jail or something? You know when right. you get let out of jail? Well, no, I don't. Give you... I don't. No. No, I don't. It's just me, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Ruffy, the Airbnb Country Pub Project is a fantastic initiative. Why should people make their first stop at a country pub when they come to a country town? I think over the last few years, especially when we, since we've taken over, we've got the accommodation upstairs and, yeah. you know, it's a great place to come. We've got wineries, we've got Bass Phillip, we've got local golf clubs that are great uh, public this, courses this around Australia. Shop, isn't it? It's an hour and a half from Melbourne. Yeah. Um, and even yourself, we could get you down here to milk a few cows. Yeah, maybe not. I'll, uh, I'll sit here if you don't mind. So I could stay in a room here at McCartan's overnight? You could. You could Airbnb it, that's for sure. Right. You could get on, get on the website and look it up. Do you do room service? Well, not me personally, but well, I'm pretty sure we could arrange someone that could come up and I'd like you to do me. it, yeah, right. if that's OK. <laughs> Can somebody get me a little bell? I'd like a little bell. Please make him welcome to the show. Great to have you. Yeah. We thought, wouldn't it be great to do a reenactment of that famous moment? Could you get hurty? The answer is you can't, but you can get to someone else who played in that team. It's David Flood. Oh. <laughs> Are you playing in that game? No, I was well retired. <laughs> You don't want to talk finals right now. You're seven and four. Why wouldn't you talk finals? It's, it's a shame. It's a shame oh. because it ruins our next segment. <laughs> Time now for finals chat with Chris Fagan. <laughs> Who do you want to play in the first week of finals? Would you like a home final? Will you and the team fly down for the grand final parade? <laughs> Can you go back to back? <laughs> Tell us what you won for Mark of the Year. I actually won a car. What did Peter Pazasta win? A bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, what did that make you feel like? Great honour. It looks nothing like me. <laughs> uh, Adelaide, you see, I went in with a four-year plan and I just thought I'd give the last two to Blighty. <laughs> Kevin Morris could quite easily have won, yep. been awarded best on ground. If he rings, should I give him the TV? Well, he's here now, so you can tell him yourself. Kevin Morris! Kevin Morris. Oh, oh, just a moment in time. There it is. Did you dress yourself? No, it was club uniform. Are you saying this was club uniform at training me? <laughs> I live in Port Hedland, mate. I work for... Uh, What's your job? F&G, train driver. You can't say F&G on this show. Oh. <laughs> Ron Casey and Gary Fenton said, do you want to call some football? This is after Mike Williamson yeah. departed. Yes. And I said, oh, OK, I'll do some football. So I wasn't too overly keen on it. <laughs> this isn't an inspiring story. <laughs> Did you get fined a thousand dollars? I did. It was a good result at the end of that. Uh, Fitzroy people rang into the radio station and said, Dougie, you've done a great thing at Fitzroy. The umpire was wrong. We're going to help pay for your thousand dollar fine. Yeah. Footscray people rang in and said, Dougie, you've been grouse. <laughs> I had cash come to my joint and bag us smart. <laughs> I made nine and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> I 
I just have so much love and admiration for this man. And I'm definitely not one of those people that says that your music is a bit one note. I just want to... <laughs> I'm not one of those uh, people. Two rounds, we finally got you. And... I, I know, Nicky. I was happy to come in round two, but you said. You <laughs> were... A bit of Greg Williams in him, I think, here, Adam. Oh, back too soon. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're here for the brewery fresh Carlton draft. It's great to finally get Gary on. One of the great commentators of the game too, Gary. Right, Gary. And you've been keeping an eye on right throughout 2009. You are fearless. You're the only person in the competition who does do in the this. media who does this, who turns the guys back on uh, media performers. And it's time to well, announce. Well, I do it. I do it for a higher goal. At the end of the year, of course, I get to hand out the Golden Committee. It's very brave Which is there, there for, yep. the, for contributions to uh, commentary. <laughs> uh, another wonderful, oh, wonderful stellar. year of commentary that we look at every week. And let's have a look at the nominations for the Golden Committee this year. For nominations for the 2019 Golden Committee are Mark Rusciuto. I don't know the rules. Oh, Tabana. Didn't know what was coming. Isn't that incorrect disposal? I don't know the rules. Brian Taylor. Lionel Richie. Ooh, uh, what's that one? Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. Wayne Carey. <laughs> The second time this week, Fantasia feeling the pinch, Doug. <laughs> Dermot Burton, Russian Antonov. So what we've got here with these stoppages, we've got man on man everywhere. Except, oh, that's the Russian Antonov. Brian Taylor, his dad is my dentist. Shipping Holy around, Swiss. here's Tomlinson. Holy Swiss. His dad is my dentist. Oh, what wow! Year. What a year! What a year! It's a star-studded. Star-studded. Um, how do you separate them? It's like plate field. It's, that. it's a, I've, like I've said all week, all year. It's an embarrassment. Yeah, really. Of Richards. Right, yes. <laughs> uh, but the winner, uh, the, oh, the 2019 go. Golden Committee, Golden Committee oh, and it moment. goes to <gasps> Mark Richards. Yes. <laughs> Mark well Richards. Well done. Well done. Well, of course, he's. He's iconic. I don't know the rules, oh, which will be... It's, I'll never forget it. It was no. amazing. Um, and, uh, he earlier recorded uh, this message. Couldn't be me. with us tonight, right? Thanks for this award, guys. I'd like to say it's an honour, but to be honest, Pangy, you're starting to give me the shits. You're lucky I'm not in the same room. Well, <laughs> Lucky you're not in the same room. Aye, aye. Hey. What would you say to him if he were... If you, if to to Margaret Shooter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I would say this, you sad, sad little man. <laughs> oh, no. That. <laughs> I can't believe he sent that message, by the way. He doesn't even have the class to, uh, to come over and accept the medal uh, and accept the, the, award. the award yeah, yep. with the grace um, of which the, ma the, the... You know, it's named the after the Mac yeah, 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 Committee. Course, yep. So if he was here, I'd say to Mark Rusciuto, you can take your 300 games and your Brownlow medal and your Premiership medal and your... And, and Bye! Sam. <laughs> well, well, well. Sam. Sam. Mark, good to see you. <laughs> Sam. Hello, mate. Hello, Mr. Fan. Hello, mate. This would get awkward. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to a break. Go to a break. break. Stick well, around. We'll, we'll, we'll get to a break. More Margaret Shooter when we come back. Hello, mate. Hey, Mickey. Sportsmanship, and as every supporter, you should watch this. We want to give you the thumbs up, Cake Big Fella, right here. Have a look at that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with your right hand? Oh, no. <laughs> The cake, mate, you can stick that on the ground. And can I have a... There we go. Here's another one for you. A typical pie stand right there. You can stick that up. Oh, I look at that and see a lot of diversity because... <laughs> that's actually... They're not in the members. That's actually our outreach program. <laughs> I picked up a copy of uh, Tiny Toby. Um... Oh. 
uh, the, the naughtiest giant. Right? Okay. So page seven, you really have to be careful okay. because I mean, because uh, uh, if that could happen, then... well, you know what, Vola? It's happened to the best of us. Probably not to that extent, and probably not in front of three million people. <laughs> when you think about it, it was a bloody clanger, wasn't it, Vola? But, uh... I need to ask you about this infamous incident that happened at the Collingwood pre-season luncheon. What were they thinking? I mean, as a Melbourne supporter, we're, we're given Barbary and we're given Quince and Fig from, you know, birth to build up an immunity to it. You can't go giving it to poor people. It just doesn't work that way. It was a great moment. It was a touching moment for him. He got the guard of honour. Yes. It was just only fitting that his uh, his guide dog also got one as well. So there you go. I think it's just a, I think it's a great moment. When you put the invite out there and saying that you're celebrating an umpire, usually you have to knock people back at the door. But unfortunately, we haven't tonight. This is all we've got over here. Three people and a, and a dog. It, it's, we have got you a signed framed photo of the one person that you adore. That's it. There you go, Ray. That is magnificent. Yeah. Again, absolutely magnificent to have those three blokes part of the show on a regular basis. They're very much part of the family and we uh, love the contribution that Fitzy, Titus and Sando make to the show right throughout the year. C uh, congratulations on the Golden Committee, Mark Rashida. Everything's great. must be back, yeah. It means a lot, actually, guys. I'm a bit disappointed about the size of it, but thank you anyway. That's it. It's like your statue over there. <laughs> <laughs> Keep everything in proportion. How are you, mate? I'm very good. Big week for you, isn't it, as a, like a premiership, you know, hero? Well, a long time ago. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah but still. But there's know. some of those images we'll never forget. Yeah. 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 Which it's... ones? <laughs> Kiss you. well, you're not going back there you again, are well, you? No, you are a terrifying man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, of course, you're a premiership player in 98. It's yeah. a very special day. But yeah, when, if it, when it comes to grand final memories, when it comes to you, I, I always think of uh, 2009, you delivering the premiership cup uh, <laughs> in the traditional manner via, via flying fox. Can I just say, though, Mark, you know I love you. Have a look at your buttocks there. They are magnificent. <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look amazing. You could crack walnuts off those if you wanted to. How did that come about? Was that, well, why did you say yes to that? I'm the Premiership Cup ambassador, and yeah. uh, they said they wanted to do something special. So we practised that at 9am the mm. morning after the Brownlow, yeah. and I wasn't in great condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, oh, wouldn't it have been just easier to buy a couple of tickets? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, well, that was the good thing about it. I didn't have to use my tickets to get into the ground, so I gave them to the Craig Hutch and the scalp. <laughs> Sorry. He's throwing haymakers. No, the boss. Uh, you're going to write the boss. Hey, uh, um, <laughs> you're a great. <laughs> you're hey, by the way, Ooh. you're a great Adelaide man, of course, and uh, you know Ryan Fitzgerald's a great Adelaide man, and he's joining us on the show. We've seen a couple of his highlights. He's already been dressed up as a giant twisty tonight, and he joins us over the bar <laughs> with Titus O'Reilly, Fitzy, and Titus, everybody. <laughs> hey, great to see you two blokes. Titus, to you first, um, you must be, as a man who loves the game, you must be very excited to see GWS into its first grand final. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The Rampage win the pre-season and the Giants win. <laughs> the... Isn't grassroots footy just thriving in this country? I tell you what, if the Giants win the Premiership, it's going to be the biggest anti-climax since I last brought someone back to my room. <laughs> I, I'm, kid, I'm kidding, I've never got it to come back to my room. <laughs> Titus, can I ask if you thought that Toby Green had been treated unfairly? The treatment of Toby Green is absolutely disgraceful. I mean, we just want consistency. Here's an image of the Toby Green incident, you can all see here. And I've gone back in the archives and found a, almost the exact same incident, if we could put that up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. I mean can, can, can we can we compare the pair for a second? You know, <laughs> on one side we've got someone who's been vilified, on the other someone who's a hero. <laughs> on, you know, on one side we've got someone who got suspended and missed a prelim, on the other he gets an Order of Australia. I mean, <laughs> and Fred Hollows was doing it to kids. I mean, <laughs> it's a disgrace. <laughs> 
mate. Wow. Fitzy, Fitzy, you're down yeah. there, of course. We've got the football director of the Adelaide Footy Club sitting mm. alongside us. There's been no announcement on the coaching position yet uh, regarding uh, the Adelaide Crows. You're still well and truly in the mix. Yes, uh, there's some odds out, I think, there for me at the out. moment. These are legitimate. Can we have a look at the board? Yeah. And the, this, as we speak, what you are... What are at the moment, guys? You're 41 bucks. <laughs> as is the man sitting next to me, Mark Rashuda. Oh, yeah. hello. If we well, can find those on a ticket, can I just we're all say the me, money. 41 bucks, that's ridiculous, because Jaden Stevenson gave me 50, so <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, I'll be lubing up Maru later on to see if I can get that coaching role. Right. And he'll have a thousand how's, on it as well, I think. How's, uh, how's the search going, Mark? It's good. <laughs> you should ask Andy. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Why are we upset at Andy? No, we're not upset. Uh, just... You're a bit upset. A little bit. Yeah. Well, I, he I, said, he what... said Scott Burns was dead set, lock it in. I'd like to wager it would not even... be Scott Burns. <laughs> Really? In fact, you... this could be as good a cue for any right. for mixed multi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, I... It is that time of the year, uh, we, well, that time of the night, but it's been a big year for Mixed Multi. Can we look at some of the legs oh. that I believe were outstanding calls? I'm glad, I'm glad you call them legs and not highlights. Well, they're legs <laughs> and they're a bit stiff because most of these uh, should have got up. <laughs> I've got a feeling and I can't shake it. Tonight's the night. <laughs> it cannot lose. <laughs> this one cannot lose. It can lose and it probably will. Yeah. <laughs> Another day in paradise <laughs> and... <laughs> oh. I'd like to wager that is a great metaphor for North Melbourne season this <laughs> year. <laughs> I'd like to wager yep. that the only other bloke to cramp up mid-song <laughs> was Meatloaf on Grand Final Day. <laughs> Check this guy out. There he goes. That's a that's, that's a nice block. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you've ever ever eaten one of those too quickly. There can be repercussions. And here it comes now. <laughs> They've identified something. What is it? What's going to happen? And okay. have a look at the parent. Bang. that that ferret is owned by Ben Stratton. <laughs> Can't believe what you're about to see. He's obviously slept dangerous in there, whatever it is. I'll get it. I'll get it. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wager that Medvedev has missed the opportunity to land the first ever hole-in-one in tennis. <laughs> Here we can see the truck, what's it carrying, what's on it, what's behind it, <laughs> and... <laughs> he had two jobs, hit the drum and hold on to the stick. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> and... Uh... Oh, the dick! <laughs> and, mate... <laughs> has never been seen. <laughs> I would like to wager that Asian MasterChef is a lot more fun than our MasterChef. Oh, 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 that was very funny. Very funny. So we got this week. Uh, so you, you've gone, you've gone big on Richmond this week. You've tipped a Richmond. Here's the Put mixed multi for this week. Rich, the Tigers both one to thirty nine. Dion Presser is flying to win the Norm Smith. Uh, Josh Caddy just to kick a goal at any stage, and Basher Hooley gets plenty thirty plus. That actually <laughs> cannot like lose. It's half a chance. Hundred to one. It's actually half a chance. I reckon hundred to one. If you want to have a go, go to Sportsbet. Look up. You like a go? You'll section. have a go at that. I'll have a crack at that. Come yeah. on, let's get on. Uh, gamble responsibly, no matter what you're doing. So yeah. no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, th thanks for coming on. No worries. Good on you, no, thank you. Pleasure. Yeah, no, thank you. Know you. Thank you. I'll have a drink with us upstairs. Yeah. I, uh, time to go back down to the basement bar where our great mates of the Picket Palace are standing by their net song for the night. Pull your head in. Take it away, boys.
this show. Yeah. Programs like ours are, are One of the great cars. You get great support. And we've had magnificent Thank support you, Holden. by the team at Holden. Uh, the Colorado promotion's given great us the chance to, the to show uh, country legends and regional legends of the game who have made huge contributions to their clubs. Yeah. Uh, let's hope we get to do a whole lot more in 2020. You, Thanks Holden. to everybody at Holden for being part of it. Time now for the last shout. Here we go. <laughs> We're there. We're there. Mark Knight, this is an iconic moment. This is uh, the moment. This is in a, the grand final, and it's always marked by the grand final poster from the Herald Sun, and uh, you've been tasked with that job. Give us the winning posters uh, if these teams win. Which one do you want to do first? I think we're going to do both at the same time. Are we going to do both at the same time? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's here do we go. Yeah, right, here we go. Right, 2019 cheers. posters. Here they are. Oh, yeah. Love them. Love them. Yes! Don't forget, all, every time you buy one of those posters, all proceeds go to the goodfridayappeal.com.au. So there'll be hundreds of thousands of them purchased. Well, if they're rich, rich and win, maybe 5,000 if the Giants get up. So. <laughs> no, no, great no, job no, as great always, job. Mark. Well, and we've been round of applause for Mark Knight for well coming done, in. And the Herald Sun. Thank you. Sam, we're just about done. Uh, there's been a, apparently a, a huge push on social media to um, to yep. get your tip. Who, who wins? I, you want my guess, do you? Is that what oh, you want? No. That's what tips tip. are. They're just guesses. So you're not, who's going to? You're going to have a uh, guess. If you want a serious uh, answer to that question, I'll say this: the, the winner will come from um, the two, it will come down to two things. Whatever team doesn't panic, and secondly, how many times uh, the arc stuffs up the goal review system. <laughs> So that'll come down to that. GWS, GWS by 15 goals. There you go. right, we're just about, we're just about oh, finished here. Uh, we have to obviously thank everybody who's made this show possible. There's a whole, body, a whole lot of people behind the scenes. They know who they are, who make this show uh, uh, hum the way it does occasionally. Uh, they're the ones who put the whole thing together <laughs> and we're the lucky ones who get on the end of their hard work. So they know who they are. There's too many to mention. But specifically Carlton Draft, Sportsbet, Holden, Channel 7, everyone at 7 has been so supportive yes, of this show. Lewis Martin, thank you yeah, very much, mate. has been amazing. Uh, Marty Sheargold, Fitzy, Sano and Titus, they step up when we ask them to, uh, and we love that. And the SB, let's not forget the SB. You're sitting in it. Yeah, my word. Oh, that boys. And all, all the guests, um, all the guests who have come on with the right spirit uh, the whole way through uh, since we started doing this, but particularly in 2019. So thanks to everybody who's made the show possible. And everyone who watches, fun. everyone who watches, yeah, we just have a ball doing it for you. Do. It's made. By fans, for fans, and we really appreciate all the support we get. So hopefully we can do it all again next year. Hey, Mark Rashido didn't say that, by the way. I'll, I'll yeah, no, yeah, do it, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to go out with a very special song. You've heard Picket Palace tonight doing a number of songs for featured artists. By the way, uh, this is their album, the Picket Palace, the footy record. Uh, these boys have had a phenomenal year. Yeah, they've got, a special, they've got a special launch of this tomorrow night at the Northcote, uh, at the Northcote Social There's Club. The Social so Club, get along, get along. Get great hotel. It's an actual album too, it's like it's 1986, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting it out, vinyl's making a resurgence, mate, it's on the way back. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, so really mate, I just want to go home. Hey. <laughs> Well, we're going to send you out on a big one because yes, they've, they've honoured a number of people who are big names in the footy industry, but they're about to honour our very own Andy Marr. What? We, we said to them, can you write a song about Andy Marr and his contribution uh, to the front bar? And they've done it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everyone. Uh, go Tigers. Let's have a great weekend. Murray, get down, well done, get down there, Murray. Murray go dance. You get down dance. there. As we throw down to the basement here at the SB for the last time tonight, good night Australia. Here's Pickett Palace with Andy Marr. Come on. You can call me Radar if you're one of my friends. Oh, I'm the wokest bloke on SEN. And every time I fluff my lines, I dance like a bloody galah. Well, I'll admit I'm not renowned for my acting, the comic signing. I'm one day on the front bar with Nick Malloy. Oh, you know him. I'm famous. I'm well respected. And my glasses, they look distinguished. I'm athletic. I'm a runner in the women's feather baggers. G'day, Shags. On your coco. I'm a guru. I'm the great man. Shut up, Mick. Shut up, Sam. Shut up, Fitzy. Shut up, Santa. I'm the host. I'm the star. I'm a celebrity. I run Channel 7.
you can't put that in your multi mix. Blah, blah, blah. Charlie Kerno, blah, blah. I wear stupid glasses. Oh. Oh, finish the question. You can call me Ray, though, if you want to. Cricket. I was the host of that as well. It was, a, it was a great experience for all involved. We had fun. Thanks, guys. I, 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 was, I, was yeah. I thought there was going to be a lot of playing. Yeah, sure. I, I thought we were going to do some sort of like a big band or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I that was fine. That's you and I. Yeah. Start of the show. Doesn't matter, mate. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Cheers, Big Ears. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful.